Hi everyone. I am going live. Um, I have a very, very special guest. Um, he is going to be joining me. Let me. So bad at this thing. Let's see. DJ D Nice. Y'all, he got me through the quarantine. I mean, we're not really completely out. Let's see here. D nice. Where are you, my friend? I'm really trying here. <laughs> I'm struggling. Sorry guys, I know I feel like these lives when you do the the live with others, it just like it really Where is he? There you are. Did it go through? Did it go through? Well, I, Hi, Derek. What's up, Jess? How are you? I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm like two minutes late. I had to. No worries. My dog was barking and I had to give Charlie some treats. Oh, <laughs> I have my kid over here crunching with some cheese and crackers. Oh my gosh. Hi, kid. Wait, which one? <laughs> I have Haven, my middle child. Wow. Hi, Haven. Right here. Say hi. She's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. You have two babies, right? I do. I have, um, clearly, you know, I'm in my little studio right now, so let me move this microphone out of the way. Um, I have two daughters. Um, uh, I have uh, my oldest daughter. is uh, Her name is Ashley. She is 25. She uh, graduated from law school, passed I the bar in her first try, and wow. I'm working at a firm. That's amazing. What a proud papa you must be. Yes, yes. And then I have my little one. She's 10 years old and going on 99. She's very grown. And I mean, it's wild. <laughs> like, I don't even know what's going on. I feel like my 10 year old too is just like this old soul. Yes. I see so much, so, so much family in here right now. Wow. CQ family in here. Well, thank you for, you know, this is the first day. Um, of I would say is like a very um, important and momentous month. I would say that um, Black History Month for a lot of my family, they're like, I live this every day. <laughs> like this is how we are. This is just how we live. Um, and I would say same with, with um, me. I mean, Hispanic Heritage Month um, is, is just something that you live every day and the importance of leaning into who you are and the culture and community that you build. Um, and I just, you know, I really wanted to highlight and celebrate tastemakers and activists. And you are a culture creator. I mean, you've been doing this for such a long time and you are an incredible artist across multiple mediums. Um, and I think it's just so, for me, I think it would just be such an inspiration for so many people just to hear a little bit about your story. Um, like, where are you from? Like, where where were you born? Where'd you grow up? <laughs> well, I do appreciate all, all of the kind words and I feel like I owe you some money for those words. Um, <laughs> you, um, But no, I, I, Black history has always been important to me. You know, I, I didn't come from a, a family that spoke about Black history that much, you know, like a lot of it, a lot of it, especially during my time of growing up, was um, was learned because of the music that I chose to listen to. So it was the Public Enemies, and there was a rapper from LA named Paris, from, you know, not LA, I think he was from the Bay Area named Paris, and, you know, and of course, Karis One, who I started out with um, in, in our group, Boogie Down Productions, but a lot of what I learned about Black history actually came from music, you know, and uh, that's why music has always been extremely important in my life. You know, I grew up in, in the South Bronx, um, you know, very, very tough time back in the late 70s, early 80s, oh, wow. yeah. and, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it was a tough time, you know, until, you know, and the, the one thing that saved me once again was, was music. You know, I was uh, talking to a buddy 
yesterday while I was, I was in Miami for work. And we were just talking about where did that source of inspiration come from? And it, for me, it was always about, you know, I'm, you know, grew up with very humble beginnings, you know, like extremely humble, like difficult times, you know, credit at the corner store, but it, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't cause me to lose inspiration. You know, like I always imagined that there was more, more to life and more out there. And which is why I do so many things, you know, because I was, it's almost like throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks, you know, like I was trying everything. So interesting because I feel like a lot of artists um, and certainly people who were born into a certain circumstance and paved their own way. It's something I can relate to as well. Like there was no, I didn't know anybody who had done anything that I had done. I just knew that there was another way or there must have been, there must be like a better way. And there was like, a better life out there than the one that I was born into necessarily. And um, not that, you know, my parents did the best they could, obviously. And, and uh, financially, um, it's tough when you're in survival mode and living yes. paycheck to paycheck and you don't know if you're going to be okay tomorrow. And so that puts you in this like fight or flight kind of space. Um, but to have the hope that you had as a little, a little boy, it sounds like, that there was more out there for you. Where do you think that came from? Being inspired by, by music and television. Mm. You know, a lot of what I watched growing up was, was to kind of be, um, you know, just kind of like live this kind of imaginary life. You know, like I, I grew up watching, obviously like a, a lot of people from my generation, you know, like the lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> and not that I was, I had a desire to be rich and famous, it was just the desire to what Robin Leach was doing was showing you all these different places all over the world. And I wanted to figure out how to get there. And, and you know, not about being rich and famous, but it was, it was about getting to that place. How was I going to get there? You, you know what it was? It just felt like luxurious to be comfortable. Yes. Like they weren't stressed in the same way about like tomorrow. Right. They had the freedom to even dream. Yes. Sometimes it feels like when you're in some of these circumstances, it's hard to, to even feel like you can dream. And, and I feel like during, you know, you created Club Quarantine, uh, which is, you know, you really kind of like, man, you, you're a culture creator and shaper and, and you've been doing it. I, I was, you know, reading up on you and how you even started your career and, and you're like, big hit was really around you standing up for something and, and wanting to speak on issues that, that, that are super meaningful and matter, but then trying to do it through song and, and, and touching people that way. It's yes. quite beautiful. That's, that's, that has always been important to me, but I've always felt that there should be a balance between enter entertainment and education. You know, mm -hmm. like it shouldn't always lean in one direction, you know, like, I'm quite sure that there are films that you've made or television shows or that you've made that you did it because it was fun. And then there were things that you felt that you needed to do, whether it was to inspire, you know, black and brown people or just to inspire humanity in general, you know, like um, I've always felt like it was important to, to have that balance between the two. So for every song that we've made, like a self-destruction or stop the violence, there was still like call me D nice, which was fun or, you know, Jack <laughs> of spades or whatever, like, there's still fun records. And, and even with what I'm doing now with, it, with um, social media, you know, when I started doing this, it was, it was from a very selfish place of me feeling lonely and me trying to stay connected to people because I was, I was isolated alone. And, uh, you know, for months, uh, my family was in New York. My daughter was in, in law school. My little one was with mom in, in Michigan. My mom was in New York. And I had moved to LA one year prior so I was here, here alone, you know, and, you know, music is what kept me going even before I went live the first time. And uh, when I started going live and sharing these stories, I realized that there were so many people out there that felt just as lonely as I did, you know, mm -hmm. and if I felt like, look, and I, I was in a very comfortable space, although I was home alone, I lived in a very nice apartment, you know, I, I mean, you know, I had the ability to fly somewhere and get on a plane but i wanted to do the responsible thing 
especially once this started taking off, the responsible thing was to maintain where I was to keep people safe and inspired to just listen and want to party together. And mm -hmm. that has always been like my life since I was a kid, finding that balance between what makes me happy and what also feels good doing for people. But like, what a blessing that you took something that was like so, what a blessing for us. You took something, an experience that was so painful and isolating and you turned it into, I would say it got me through quarantine and I'm not, alone in this I mean you got like Oprah and like <laughs> Michelle Obama and Rihanna I mean it's wild the amount of people that you touch and I you know obviously notable people it was it was like what even like um Papa Q Q um Quincy yes and everybody was on <laughs> and, and you just brought people together in such a, a beautiful way and I don't what I don't even you're like an angel or something like that is incredible how many people you shifted that like really felt like they couldn't keep going and like how were they gonna face tomorrow and and you man you got us through it I think we all felt that way it didn't matter how 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 successful you were or how many people were in your home we all we all needed something like this to get us through you know like I would I would read the comments and um, obviously I can't see every one of them, but certain comments would would stand out, you know, like I remember one time, like early on, like a woman was saying how like she was forced to be at home in an abusive relationship because she couldn't go anywhere. Oh, and, and it was things like that, you know, or you know, like some of the messages that I've read recently where, you know, a young lady said that, um, you know, she was sick with COVID and then this was the very first week. She had COVID and then the, the following week her father was murdered and what kept her kept her going and kept her inspired was club quarantine. And it wasn't just about the music. That's that's where that's what, what keeps me inspired to continue to do this because it's not necessarily about the music. It's about a group of people that found that found themselves in this virtual club quarantine, mm -hmm. this CQ group, and even if you're not a part of CQ People still come because they either want to hear the music or they want to see these familiar names. You know, whenever someone's feeling sad, they will log on and read some of these silly comments. And we all, I mean, we literally just have fun. Even me as a DJ, while I'm playing music, I read the comments, I laugh, I kind of interact with people. Um, but it's, we found each other during a really dark time, you mm -hmm. know, and it's been like a blessing to, to be someone to provide like this space this space and this energy to keep someone's spirits high. Yeah, and I and I would say that like, there's probably, I mean, there's a lot of people out there and they didn't do it. And so I just like, thank you for being you and for doing it. I remember we had, we had dinner and I was like geeking out on you and I was like, no, really, do you know how you've affected all of our lives? No, really, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, I, I do, because you you feel it. You you genuinely understand, because you, I mean, you're very connected. Your soul is very genuine, and, and you are so connected to all of it. And it's just so cool that you um, are channeling your gift and bringing people together like this. Look, I was I was geeking out too. You know, I'm I'm a huge Marvel fan, so I I was I was having dinner at someone's house with with Sue Storm. I was geeking out. <laughs> I couldn't say it. <laughs> but I was like, oh man, this is just this is crazy. No, but it's it's great that um that what we do matters to people. You know, I can't imagine what this world would have been like in recent times without entertainment. And I, I know we're not here just talking about entertainment, but it's hey, it, it was so dark. The place where people and I think it's why I, I've you know I. I you have done other things, I've done other things, but really what brings me back around to entertainment is it people first start to hear the stories that artists dream about, um, whether it's through music or through television or through a movie, but pop culture and entertainment has a way of showing people what's possible. Yes. You know, and it is like, and music in particular is the oldest form of um, communication. 
of history yes. of people together. Um, and it's just like, I'm just so grateful that you that you have that you did that you created Club Quarantine. I want to know about where is it today? And like, how how has it moved through um, its own sort of like evolution from being in your in your apartment <laughs> in LA uh, to like what has happened? Well, you know, once um, the world started to open up we did we tested it out with about four shows for club quarantine lives like you know because I, at one point i was like man when the world opens up no one's gonna care about club quarantine like this is fun now i'm just gonna have fun with it and then get back to my life that was the goal and then i decided to try out one show and it was the hollywood bowl i would you know i imagine i had imagined playing the hollywood bowl the entire time we were doing cq and I tested it out with that just to see what the vibe was going to be like, to see, because there's one thing to have people come in to hear you when it's free, when you're doing it from the comforts of your home. But it's mm -hmm. another thing to get people out when it's still okay. like, yeah, you know, we're still kind of dealing with this thing. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, 18,000 people, we sold that out in like three days. Wow. And that's when I realized that it was, um, that it was no longer just an online thing, that this was something that people really believed in. This, this represents love, no matter what, when the world opens up, this is going to represent such a good time for people that they will always remember the friends that they met and the friends they've met in, in, in this virtual club and you know the music that they heard because I play everything. You know, I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just playing like all Latin music or I'll just play like all hip hop or, or rock and roll. It's because I just have this love of music and I, and I just wanted to share it with people. Um, Recently, you know, there there are a lot of things that I'm about to announce. I, I have to pace myself because I have to wait for the clients to announce it first. But there's some big, some really big TV shows that I'm a part of um, that that they will announce next week. And um, you know, the week after I finally announce um, the first the first CQ live show that I'm doing for 2022, which is a really big deal. And um, you know, I got a tour coming up soon. Like it's pretty much a done deal. We we just we're just trying to pace ourselves with with the announcements. Um, you know, I have um, this whole documentary project that we're doing, and it's um, it's it is the story. It's not the story of club quarantine, but it's the story of people finding each other, and finding each other virtually with music, and and how we all kind of like saved each other's lives. And that's um that's I'm so excited about that project. So if um, I love that, so if people want to know and stay up to date on like what's happening with, with you and club quarantine and everything that's that's going on, um, do they follow you on Instagram and then just hope that they catch that post or? Oh no, they will but, definitely catch that post. They should follow me. If you're not following me right now, I know I see a lot of I love you, Jessica. So there are a lot of Jessica fans <laughs> and friends in here. You should follow me on IG because I will be making this announcement soon. And it's, um, I, I promise you, it is so beautiful. You know, um, you know, I can tell you one thing that we're working on that, that I'm really excited about, which is, which is um, Club Quarantine Live at Carnegie Hall. And that's nice. happening. Yeah, that's happening um, in, in August. And I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, like I'm talking about it more, you know, because it's like a real thing that's happening to be able to, take music and take different genres of music and to play a stage like that, which which to me is the equivalent of like that feeling that I had at the Hollywood Bowl of being able to like play music and play all genres of music and to, to look out and see this beautiful sea of people of different races. And um, it, it's, it, it's truly like the highlight of my career, you know, and, I've been in- I mean, and all, it's it's so interesting what you're what you're saying because I just feel like everything that you're talking about is about community. Yes. It's you've built this um, space where people can have community, and it's the one thing I think that we've all been sort of starving for is that is that community and that connection. Um, and you know, regardless of people going back to their day to day and moving into whatever it is, the, the hats they wear. I think there's just something so beautiful and reassuring that like you're not alone. 
And I think why people will show up in person, why people will show up, um, you know, in your lives and during club quarantine, both is because they want that experience. They want that connection. They want to believe that humanity is better than the news. They want to believe that humanity is better than, you know, the clickbait sort of like um, dark stuff that, that we all get flooded with on our yes. social media feeds. I mean, at a, you know, we all had to kind of like, I think, get to that point where we had to kind of shut off because it was so brutal. It was brutal, but what what, what keeps me coming uh, going back and wanting to play music really is, it's the people. It is based on community, you know. Um, you know, the same way that people say, you know, they'll constantly tell me that the music saved their lives. The people and seeing this, you know, this amount of people that come, no matter what time of night I'm on, you know, at the end of my set, it'll say, hey, 60 to 75,000 people are in here listening to you. I like, mean, it's like, what? It's that still mind blowing to me. That, that is you can, you can actually leave your house or you can go listen to someone else or you can turn on a movie, but people would rather some people would rather just still just listen to me play music and would yeah and want to dance and virtually yeah. dance together and um it is it's beautiful it, it saves my life as well you know mm. it makes That's me happy cool. oh oh my heart my heart <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say like you know knowing how many lives uh you have touched and also just thinking about, you know, you have two girls um, and just thinking about like the next generation of people that are that are coming up in the world. You've been an activist for a long time. And I guess what I'm trying to say is like, what do you what would you like to see out of humanity more of? What do you think humanity could use a little bit more of? It's, I'll say like because it's. Um, the first day of Black History Month, which, I mean, you can't tell the history of Black and Brown people in one month, but for, you know, for the sakes of it being Black History Month, I would say that I, I, I would just hope for better race relations between people. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what I love about this virtual space is that it doesn't matter who you are. Like, we we all come together and we all communicate with the, with one another. And I would, I would love to see more of that in the world. You know, the world is so beautiful. And, and if you know, it, it, it was kind of sad to see some people go back to what life was before the pandemic, because when we're, in, we're in, the, in the heat, in the very beginning of it, we all came together. And then we're slowly kind of like moving apart from each other, you know, and that's, you know, what's what's sad when you pay, when, you, when you're paying attention to the mute to the, to the news, but like, with what we're doing and how we are inspiring people to stay together, I just hope that that continues to like, cause some change and real effect in the lives of many people like that's I'm always going to be an activist there's not much that I desire anymore you know I'm, I'm 50 years old I'm having a great life I've seen a lot of things I've traveled the world I've met a lot of people um, I've done a lot of things uh, I've raised a lot of money for, for charitable organizations that's always going to be me I'm always going to be that person to always see the good in people and try to do good for people that may not have those opportunities. And that is the most important thing to me in my life. And of course, I mean, you know, providing for my family and, and, and I'm God fearing. So, you know, of course, you know, um, always praising God, but like for the most part, it's like, how, how can we keep each other going keep each other inspired? And that's my mission. You know, listen, I'm, I'm 50, 51. Life is good. <laughs> I mean, you keep talking about your age, like, like it matters. Um, but it, I mean, you a ageism does exist, though. It yes. doesn't matter to me right now. But and ageism and exists. And Before and COVID, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm turning 50. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, I feel the same way. <laughs> I was like, yo, like, I'm what, the 50. what is going on? But at the same time, it's sort of like, I would never want to go back. No, I would never. I love my age, by the way. I love, I love where I am in life. I love my age. I love the struggle that I had. Like, here's what's funny. My daughter, my daughter's 10, right? Uh -huh. she, saw, she said to me the other day, I always wanted to ask you, how did you chip your tooth? 
And I told her this story. I was like, you know, when I was 10 years old, I had a fight in school. And she stopped me and she said, you had a fight at 10? And it, and it dawned on me that growing up during that time is way different than, mm. than the kids growing up right now. And also different than our kids, you know, like we've done well and we, we have our kids in private schools and we, yeah. we take them on vacation. So they don't necessarily see the things that we, we've seen. And mm. I was looking at her and I, I was like trying to imagine my 10 year old in a fight. And I was like, all right, that, that'll never happen. Like it's not That's her thing. Different reality, right? That they have. Does that worry you? Um, yes, yeah, sometimes. Oh. Sometimes it worries me, but that's why I try to share as many of these stories as possible, you know, and, um, and, and try to like open her up, you know, open both of my kids up to different things. It's important because I don't want, I don't want them to be jaded by life and by success. It's like, you gotta, we all have to live in this world together. And there, we're, we're all, there's so many people that may not have these opportunities, but if you can inspire them to do great, maybe they can pass that on to other people, you know, and, and inspire others, you know, like my whole life has been about, you know, keeping people inspired. And that's what makes me happy. Is that what gets you up every day? Like every day, motivated, every single day, it keeps me motivated. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, and you just like wake up and that's, and that's the energy. I feel like sometimes I don't know. You, it's like a gift to be born with that type of motivation because sometimes it feels so hard or it feels like there's, you're, you know, pushing a boulder up a waterfall and you're just like, damn it. Can it get be any easier sometimes? Well, I won't say that it's, it's always easy. Um, you know, sometimes it really is hard. You know, it's hard when you, you know, I spend a lot of time playing music for people, you know, during the last two years. I spent a lot of time um, playing music in this space. And even when I'm not here, I'm usually doing a fundraiser on, on a Zoom event or, um, you know, sometimes it can be heavy, you know, when you're constantly reading stories from people, you mm -hmm. know, the stories of, of them surviving, of maybe, you know, being sick in a hospital bed, fighting cancer. But you know, like in the very beginning of the pandemic, um, one story that that it moved me, it actually forced me to try to read as many DMs as I can. I can't read them all, but I try to. And, and I was getting these messages from a, from a nurse. And when I finally decided to go in and I actually saw that message, I had seen that this woman, she sent about 20 messages prior and they were all about one patient. Can you please shout my patient out? She listens to you every night. Can you please, can you please, it will uplift her spirit. But I didn't see it. I mean, I was getting so many, I get, I mean, as you, you know, we get a lot of DMs. When I finally responded to her, I said, hey, I'm sorry, I just, I just you know, just came across this. Um, what's your patient's name? I'll give her a shout out today. And she said, unfortunately, she passed away. And when you hear stories like that, it just it just makes you want to like pour into people and keep inspiring and keep inspiring. But there's some times when you can pour, you know, you got to have your your cup full as well. You know, like um, um, sometimes it gets a little heavy and sometimes it gets hard. But once again, I'm not in that same space that a lot of other people are. You know, like my heart is different. My heart is maybe I'm just tired of standing up. You know, I'll play music for hours. Maybe I'm tired of standing up. Maybe I had a little bit too much wine while I was DJing. Now I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the music for some people this is an escape for them right you know this is truly an, an escape and i would feel selfish to not to not give someone that opportunity to escape even if i can only do it sometimes once a week or maybe you know christmas holiday i was on every day like i was just home so i was on every day and it was fun it was fun like it was the very first day um so you know i just feel like it's what we're doing is so important, you know, that we're doing some good work and we're, you know, we're keeping people sane out there. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting also to think about like, as people are, are, are thinking about their time and, and spending how they want to spend their time, but just also like getting drained and what is that? And then even like going out in the world, it still doesn't feel totally safe. Um, I've been learning about like just moving energy you know, because you do get a lot of people coming at you 
especially you, at one time, um, thousands of people. I mean, you affect millions of people within days. And, um, and that's a lot of energy to come That's at. a lot of energy. <laughs> um, you look at it that way, like, yes, that's a lot of energy. I'll text you a little um, something that I just started doing just to like flow the energy through so it doesn't get sort of like trapped. I have a question for you. What, what, what made you start Honest? Mm, I've I, always been curious about that. Like, oh, really? I'm very proud of you for doing that, you know, oh, about, about you. stepping outside of just being an artist and, mm -hmm. you know, becoming more of an entrepreneur, but doing it in a way where it's so good for people. Mm. Like, what, what made you start it? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's in my, in who I am, and I, I've always felt like if I got the opportunity um, I would pray a lot when I was little, if I got the opportunity to actually be successful, um, in, in entertainment that I wanted to be part of the greater good and do good in the world. And, um, and I guess after I became a mom, uh, 13 years ago for the first time, um, I learned about all of these chemicals that everyone is exposed to, but especially black and brown people. And especially people living in um, circumstances like the one that I grew up in, um, yes. have a ton of options and how their, their health is affected by exposure to these harmful chemicals. And you can buy these products anywhere. There really isn't like a safety measure in place. So aside from like the food being messed up, it's, beauty products, it's skincare products, it's home cleaning products. And I was like, man, I want to not do that, obviously. And my mom had cancer when she was really young. She was like 22. And I, I was like, and it was caused by something in her environment. And I was like, I don't want to get cancer and not be around for my baby. Yes. And I don't want her to get cancer. Like what? Um, and so I learned about how to, you know, what can be done. And I went, I lobbied on Capitol Hill for chemical reform. And wow. they, I learned very quickly that health is uh, something that, you know, they politicized. It's not about what's good for humanity <laughs> necessarily, <laughs> which, you know, it feels so real during COVID. Um, it became very politicized health, human health and common sense and all of that. And so I was just like, all right, I'm going to create the solution and a way to get around, you know, these companies have been around for hundreds of years that make this stuff. And I was like, you know, at the end of the day, if I can in some way prove that people want this, then hopefully the big guys that have been around for a long time, maybe they'll start to think twice about how, what they're doing uh, is I don't know, it could be different. And so I wanted to be that case study or that proof point that people wanted it, A, and B, that it could actually be, it, it could get done. So, wow. yeah. This is a great, great reason for starting it. That, that was my, that was the only question that I had for you. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get this question in because I'm in, I'm inspired by it. I, I, I think about this all the time, even like some of the products that I use, um, you know, growing up, I didn't know anything about like, you know, like the real, like real good facial cleansers and, you know, like which to choose from. It wasn't until I started to, you know, become an adult and not even just an adult within the last 10 years, you know, I started paying attention to it um, and the importance of what you put on your body and what you put in your body. Um, you know, you, you feel when you're younger, you feel like you're going to live forever and none of that matters. Mm -hmm. Like now that I'm getting older, I'm like, hey, I got to really pay attention to this. And you know, um, and, and I feel like I've been doing a better job at it. You know, I, I try to, usually when I jump on the DJ, I feel like I don't want to be the guy who is always DJing in a t-shirt. So mm -hmm. I remember like maybe around eight months ago, I tried on one of my favorite jackets and I couldn't close it. And I was like, my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> I can't believe this. I was like, what am I eating? <laughs> what is going on in my life? <laughs> and then before I came down here, I tried the jacket on and it, it, it was, it fit and it was too big. And I was like, yes. Like, 
face. Like, Get my life together. <laughs> Still got to cut down some of the wine. I have to cut down some of the wine. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's interesting. Like, it feels sometimes like you don't want to feel defeated like every decision is bad. But if we could all do just like a little something that is better collectively, I think um, humanity will be better, right? If we just raise the vibration, if we try to live on like um, a different frequency, yes, sort of what gets hammered into our heads or what they try to brainwash us with or um, now I'm going to sound like a weirdo, but no, uh, no, you, you actually don't. And, and speaking of like being on different frequencies, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things that got me through through the last two years was was learning how to to meditate, mm. you know, learn how to meditate, like truly, truly changed my life. And I'm still not there yet. I still can't slow everything down. Everything's constantly moving. But even just taking, you know, 10 minutes of just finding some peace before I start my day actually makes a difference makes mm -hmm. a difference in how i feel about myself and how i treat people um you know that's been extremely important to me as well yeah i actually discovered the same thing during quarantine and i have a hard time i i have to still listen to i have to be guided through a meditation because like my brain it just works differently unless actually there's like frequency sounds sound is very healing yes and, and it's like um very, uh, I don't know. It's like we're all, it's like your brain shifts, your mood shifts, your whole, everything shifts with different sounds. And I think that's why it's so cool. Like when you start your set, it just immediately, I, I feel like my heart just like, it just expands a bit, you know? And it's like, doesn't yes. matter. You get the glass of wine, start cooking. It just makes like, I don't know, everything just, easier lighter better so i actually feel that way too you know when i start my sets um it's it, it's always i never i don't prepare a set in advance i literally only think about the very first song that's it oh really that, that's really? the only song that matters to me is the first one <laughs> just like improv like you're just like yeah, the entire set is just based on a feeling hey. So it's it's the first song that I'm that I'm like oh I want to I'm gonna start my set with, and then I just I'll just allow the music to just take me to different places you know you know growing up. How do you in your brain have one beat going, and then you know that next beat is gonna work? Like how does that even happen? It's like in in while playing. I'm constantly moving just one leg, you know, I have this one right leg movement that I do all the time while I'm playing. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll find the rhythm and then I'll just think about a song. And I'm like, oh, this will go with it. You know, like the other day, the other day I was mixing that this record from Ghost Town DJs, um, you know, the song, at night I think of you, I <laughs> want to be. So at the end of it, when they had that kind of like upbeat drum going, um, I don't know. I started. I started singing Tony Braxton's "Unbreak My Heart," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is gonna." I mean, if you understand music production, the beats are similar, but it's just halftime, so it's just math. So it's like a double time beat. You can get it to blend it together. So I had Tony Braxton singing on top of that record, and it was, you know, I have like full studio here, so it felt like a club, and I was in here jamming. I was like, "Yes, yes, this is so hot." <laughs> I just love music. You know, like I really do love music. Music, when people say, uh, um, um, you know, you, you got to put your 10,000 and 10,000 hours in, like that's a real thing. Like that, mm -hmm. it, when you put those, when you put the work in, it just, it just comes naturally. Wow. So you just have it all, all just locked in your brain and your heart. You just have all of that there. And then it's just All like, here. that is wild. Yes. And I, I, I truly get lost in music. And I'm laughing at some of these comments. Someone said, I didn't know D-Nice was married. Okay. My camera is mirrored right now. So this is not actual ring finger. This is not. I'm not married. 
<laughs> not that I'm anti-marriage. Marriage is beautiful. I am not married. <laughs> <laughs> All you ladies out there, he is not married. <laughs> See? Charlie's in here. Oh. What's up, buddy? Oh. Oh, my gosh. He's out of, he's out of control. <laughs> anyway, I hope to see you soon. I'm going to start my... <laughs> my CQ set, get your glass of wine ready. I will, all right guys, so tune in 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you should tune in to your next set right now, D-Nice, right? Or Absolutely. not now. I'm not even gonna wait until six. I'm gonna log Nine off minutes. and I'm gonna jump right into it and have some And fun. now we know it's all improv, it's just like what you're feeling in the moment. Okay, last, before we go out, last one, what has okay. been the surprising person that has uh, followed you? When were you like, oh, snap, what? I, I'm being 100% honest here. I was really shocked that you knew who I was. I'm not making this up. Like, see, the thing about, what? like, Michelle Obama, I DJ for her. I have DJ for Oprah. Oh, you know, I didn't know you. <laughs> and when I saw your name, I was like, oh, my gosh. That's Jessica <laughs> Alba. So you were, like, really... Like Rihanna, I'm DJ for all of them. So I'm not really surprised by that. I was shocked that it was you. Yes, I was shocked. Uh, oh. So oh. yes, so thank you for listening to me. Oh, I'm giving you hugs. Oh. Now I'm like, I'm happy that I'm your friend. I'm like, I was shocked before, but like, now I'm your friend and it's great. Now, my dog is like going crazy over here. Fine in person. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was awesome. Great. This is awesome. We got to do it again soon. All right. Bye, All right. Thank All right. you Bye. for doing this.